when I think of defense in Valorant, uh, I'm thinking of sunshine and rainbows, I'm thinking of unicorns and candy, yeah, like all that good stuff. It's my happy place. Like, just defense is just more fun, and I know a lot of people, like, feel the same way. Uh, offense, on the other hand, ugh. Just the word sends shivers down my spine, like, ugh. It just isn't fun. It's like my high school math teacher. No, no one liked her, she was mean, but you still had to deal with her because you can't graduate without taking math. And to top it all off, math isn't fun either. For some reason, they decided to throw letters in there. I don't know. Like, what happened to the numbers? Uh, I don't want to find X. I hate my X. Okay, whatever. I'm getting sidetracked. But today on Skillcapped, we're going to talk about why defense is the most important and more fun half in Valorant and how you should play it. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say that we at Skillcapped have Radiant produced courses on how to defend like a champion over at Skillcapped.com. Or maybe you're just interested in getting your bot reviewed and learning what you're actually doing wrong in game. We've got you covered. So what are you waiting for? If you're looking for the fastest way to improve at Valorant, be sure to check out Skillcapped.com, link in the description below. So the reason why people like playing defense more is because you don't have to work with your team as much to try and win. Jets, Reynas, and Chambers can all take solo duels, try and get an early pick, then fall off. As a Sentinel, you can sort of just play on your own setup and get ready to anchor. You don't need to work with your brain dead teammates to do these things. While on offense, you need your teammates if you want to win. You need your no calming jet to entry. You need your lurking Sova to arrow or drone for your team. You need your toxic omen to smoke your team in. Communication is almost a necessity in attack, but it's something there's just little of in ranked. I mean, sometimes, yeah, you'll get lucky and get some cracked gamers on your team that'll just win their duels, but odds are you're going to get people who don't want to work together and then are going to turn toxic once you start losing. But if you work together on defense, you should be rolling almost every game. So how do you do that? So first, something we should talk about is probably the most popular way people are playing defense, which is playing aggressively. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a very strong way to play in defense. But what you have to understand is that you shouldn't be doing this all the time and you should know when not to overheat meaning getting too aggressive. Like you get a couple kills and then you try to go for that third one, but then you just die and give the enemy team a gun. By playing aggressively, you're conditioning the enemy team to use utility to clear you out, or they're just gonna be walking into your crosshair. But what I see happen more often than not is when they start using said utility to clear you out, you don't leave. I see players still try and get a kill when they just really aren't supposed to. Being predictable is the worst thing you can do in this game. And if you're aggressive every round, you're going to get punished. But once you start using utility to gain map control, feel free to try a more passive approach to playing defense. For example, on Icebox, it's super important you play aggressively on A site as it's simply just hard to hold. Doing so also baits out really important utility like Sova drones, Reina flashes, or whatever they're using. If you don't get aggressive and you just sit in a corner and hold an angle, they're just gonna run up on maze and or pipes and just start their execute from there and just overwhelm you with your utility. This aggressive playstyle is another reason why people love playing defense so much. It's something they can just do solo and not throw, usually. But if you use help from your teammates, it can also be really, really strong. Take a look at this clip. Their aggression and stacks very well defensively, being very dynamic on their setups. Another round where the tour comes out. Defensive aggression coming out with the Rolling Thunder around the corner. No! Sabrosa deep. He was also, I believe, affected by the Rolling Thunder, but taps away and finds the head of Neon. Kenpeki also in the overdrive on the flank. And oh boy, they melt. Two kills come through, and that's all of the attacking spawn completely cleared, yeah, including the spike, spike that's down. Granted, that's probably something you won't see in your rank games, but it's still pretty cool to see. They're getting aggressive together, and it does so much for their team. Notice the utility being used in that clip. Viper mollying spawn, Ash are sucking and stunning everything, uh, Breach Sea Blast, like this is just nuts. And then you have Neon running up behind him, but you don't have to be this complicated. A Kale Flash for your jet to dash, a stun for your race to double satchel and judge. Just communicate, get creative, and it's a ton of fun. Now, the best way to roll on defense is gaining early information and holding map control. And on a lot of maps, you can abuse this and have really strong map points you want to control. Take a listen to a clip from our newest defenders course on our website. For retakes, it's really important to take this heaven control as well as A main. So you want to close them in to basically this box right um so that's going to be super important um for the retake to help you guys actually secure this site again so um but regardless of that if they don't push a how this can be adjusted is the killjoy rotates back elbow through ct moves her turret here heaven and then just sits in place here and look what happens this whole area is safe right so the killjoy has info and then this is another case of a sentinel spreading out their utility for info playing passive for retake and we're going to be stacking up on site you almost always have to choose one site or the other to be the strong site um 
and you can base that off early info. You don't have to start right. You don't have to do that right off the start, right? So um, we can wait and see if they push a hard. If they don't, the Killjoy makes that rotation, and then she's also in a really good spot to rotate quick toward B um, if they do end up doing that. The way that maps like Split and Haven work is that there's these narrow choke points, like an A main. So if you have like a cipher cam earlier, you have your jet posted up on the op, you can four stack the entire other half of the map and it's going to be super hard to push through. This is possible because of that early information that you gain, and it really bolsters your defense. This is also why Sentinel Utility is just so strong. Depending on how you're using it, you may not even have to play in certain areas and just stack the others. On Haven, this works too. If your jet is posted up in sewer with an op and no one peeks her, your other teammates can rotate off and just stack B or C. Because she has this early information, and if the enemy team doesn't want to run into a stack, they're going to have to default and take their time gaining map control. So let's say that maybe the enemy team is fighting for A main. That's when the jet and the sky fall back to sight, communicate to their team so they can take other areas of the map, like C long or more preferably mid control. And then you can start to pinch the enemy team and trap them in A main. And let's say they're just defaulting. Then this mid control can really help you listen and then determine where and what the enemy team is doing and going. Map control is just so important if you want to defend correctly and win more rounds than not. Now, I could talk about map control for every map, but we'd be here all day. Now it's time for my favorite way to play defense, which is by setting up traps. And you can get super creative with these. So if you watched our recent attacking guide, King talked about how defaulting can be a super useful tool to help alter your offense. And a good way to counter these defaults is setting up a trap. It's kind of hard to explain, but I have a few examples for you. I'm a Sentinel main and on Ascent in B main, this is one of my favorite and simplest traps to run. Turret goes here, this holds the entirety of B main and tells you if the enemy walks in. Then, a Sova, or yourself, playing on lane with an Odin, or some shock darts, is going to be really strong as he'll know when to shoot them. And you get bonus points if you have your Astro place a star right where they cross to use as a suck. Enemies get shredded as they run in, and it usually gets me a ton of value, if not a couple kills. Another trap I like to run a lot is on Bind, on B Long specifically. I'll place my camera here, or have my teammate spot it, and I'll have Omen or another Flash character get ready to flash off of its contact. We swing and get at least two or three kills every time. It's nuts. And then for one last one, on Split, in B Heaven, I'll throw my camera here, or place an alarm bot here, and again, have a flash character ready to flash off of its contact. All of these traps just work really well, and it's a fun way to play defense. It's creative. Get your team's vibes up, especially when they work, and there's tons more to come up with. Just get creative. Keep in mind though that if these traps aren't being used, or you're being overwhelmed, or you're being countered maybe by somebody playing anti-flash, you need to know when to give it up and play for the site. And lastly, the best way to play defense is maybe not even playing defense at all. Sometimes what ends up happening is that you're trying to anchor a site either by yourself or one other person, but the utility coming at you is just too overwhelming. Well, one option you might want to consider is playing the retake. It isn't really realistic to think that one or two people can hold off an entire army from like five other people. Sky flashes, Sova recon, Astro suck and stun, like it's just a nightmare to hold. So sometimes it's better to save your utility for retaking the site. For those of you who don't know, that means trying to take back the site from the enemy team once they have it. This could be before or after the bomb is planted. Like for example, if you know that they're going A and four of your teammates are already at A, you probably just wanna start your retake as the enemy team is planting the bomb. And then since the enemy team used so much utility to take the site, they won't have as much to stop your retake. Here's a pretty good example of a good retake. Control and they will, and it's on the retake here now for Team Liquid. They've got the Rolling right, Thunder planted. ready to go, but it might not get to the site actually, stuck you in sewers and it might get cut off here. Oh, he's going to find this. Blinding. Oh, and Link knows he's got to get out of there. He's going to be able to find his way back to the side for the retake with his teammates. And it's a fast flight with two players. Okay, oh. this has to be huge delay. Can they delay, oh. delay back side? Solkaz takes down one. The other goes down as well. The trade's coming on through, and it's just now down to Shazam and Dapper on the flank. And the Cosmic Divide, they've got to go beyond it. They have to go beyond it. There's no way to stop this. Team Liquid got the defuse. Oh, Sentinels with that double flank. It backfires. What an inc- Again, yes, these are pro teams, but these are strategies to consider when playing in your ranked games. I've done this countless of times, and it works pretty well, especially with Killjoy ulti or Breach ulti like you saw in that clip. But this was all just one in-depth guide that we have in our website though. Also, like I mentioned before, if you want a chance at having your VOD reviewed, be sure to subscribe on our website at skillcap.com. We also have tons of Radiant Smurf commentaries where we have Radiant players who walk you through exactly how to play in any situation at any rank. And they're just super helpful to see in real time what goes through a top tier player's head. Like I said, it's also backed by a rank improvement guarantee, and the reason we do that is because we're just that confident that our service works. And if it doesn't work, then you shouldn't pay.
So what are you waiting for? You got nothing to lose. Head on over to skillcap.com and get started in your way to that rank that you deserve. So hopefully it helped you guys realize how you can play defense a little better. Offense and defense are both equally important, but defense is just that bit more fun. You don't have to rely on your brain dead teammates to do anything, and you can just sort of do your own thing. Or you can hop in a custom game, queue with some friends, and come up with some nasty traps. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. And that's all for us. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.